Dear AMD, hi, it's me, Turk. <laughs> all right, all right. I know I've reviewed your hardware and I have loved recommending your products in my PC part picker streams. However, I do have a bone to pick with you today. RDNA2, when are we gonna get some more information? I keep getting teased with the PlayStation 5 and next gen Xbox, but I'm entirely in the dark about how well this is actually going to play. I've dug through the internet looking for more information, but all I found is this. 50% performance per watt improvement from RDNA to RDNA 2. What, what the heck does that even mean? Well, if you aren't going to give me any more information, I guess I'm just going to have to figure it out myself. In case you didn't know, RDNA 2 is AMD's newest GPU architecture for both the next-gen consoles and the latest Navi 2 graphics cards. When looking forward to the latest releases, companies generally throw us a bone with some solid details regarding performance improvements, but, but performance per watt? That's it? I can't persuade my wife to let me get this for Christmas unless I've got some solid proof, dang it! 10% frames per second improvement, 20% more consistent frames, <laughs> give me something. Well, let's boil down the spec a bit, shall we? Performance per watt is a metric used in the computing industry to quantify a system's efficiency when comparing it to, you guessed it, performance and power. In this context, power is easy to describe. It's how much electrical energy a device needs to activate and keep functioning. Performance is usually an easy thing to describe, but here's where things start to get a little messy. Performance is the action or process of completing a task or function. With computers, this metric can come in many forms. Like AMD's Ryzen or Intel's Core i7, processors like to improve their instructions per second. GPUs, for the most part, measure performance in floating point operations, or flops. For most of us, this means jack when I hear performance, I think frame rates, I think hash times, and even arbitrary scoring, quote, points to help compare different computing systems. So piecing the two together, AMD has left us with a pretty vague description of how much better the GPU is for future consoles and graphics cards. 50% performance improvement per watt, ugh. Let's break the numbers down. AMD is more likely to be referring to the performance here in specification known as teraflops, which is 1,000 gigaflops per second. For reference, in our previous video, the RX 5600 XT graphics card runs at about 7.5 teraflops at its stock settings. Heck, most GPUs this generation are running right around in that ballpark, but for the PlayStation 5, they're advertising an impressive 10.28 teraflops. That's a remarkable 37% improvement. But where did the 50% come from? Let's dive a little deeper. Performance per watt means that we have to factor in its power usage to come up with this value for any given unit of performance. Like I mentioned in that previous video, I believe the PlayStation 5's GPU will run right about 110 watts. So I've gone and made my 5600 XT perform right at that wattage. And sure enough, the 5600 XT PlayStation 5 version comes in at a performance per watt of 69.3. Assuming the same power usage will be in the actual PlayStation 5, we can do a bit of maths with that teraflop number and determine that the performance per watt of this GPU will be 94.8, a shockingly 50% better. There you have it, case closed. Thanks for watching. Wrong. I can't tell my wife that number and have her ready to shell out those Benjamins for the next console. So can we predict how fast it really will be? Well, with a little bit of testing, hardware know-how, and a generating a model, I think we can predict just how fast the RDNA 2 processor will be for the PlayStation 5 and a couple of different games. Here we go. Disclaimer, these numbers are purely estimates and until AMD or Sony give us additional information regarding the PlayStation 5's RDNA 2, we're just gonna have to speculate. <gasps> if I take the PlayStation 5 5600 XT and run it at different operating frequencies and voltage conditions, I can calculate standard performance per watt or PPW metrics for both benchmark frame rates and scores by dividing that output by the wattage over the test run. We will be using the reported ASIC power through hardware info. Not stopping there, we repeat this experiment at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions to gather additional data and make sure our measurements are scaling appropriately. <sighs>
Now that we have performance per watt, we need to bridge the gap. To do that, we need to build a model. No, 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 not, not one of those. Oh yeah, that, those. By taking the flops at each of the operating modes and plotting their flops per frames per second at each resolution, we can see the trend that the quote PlayStation 5 5600 XT has in terms of raw performance versus graphical performance. With that information, we can supply our new flops number and calculate a resulting value for our hypothetical RDNA 2 for the PlayStation 5. This trend might not be accurate for the newer architecture, so we're going to go ahead and supply figures for no improvement, 10%, and 20% improvement. <sighs> Plugging in our new flops per FPS value, substituting in the advertised flops for the PlayStation 5, then a bit more of maths, and we get the expected frame rates for each resolution. BAM! PERFORMANCE! With the math out of the way, let's go over the results. When running the modern standard Time Spy benchmark, our simulated PlayStation 5 from our last video has an average FPS of 64, 45, and 23 frames per second at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K respectively. With our projected frame rates, we're going to be assuming that 50% claim from AMD as well as the 10% flops per FPS value from our model, and we expect 83, 57, and 30 frames per second at the resolutions respectively. That nets the PlayStation 5's improvements over our PC build by between 7 and 19 frames per second across the resolutions, roughly 30%. That might not be the 4K 60 FPS like the PC Master Race desires, but it turns out it's faster than 62% of you plebs out there. Our model is only as good as our data, so let's test a couple of other applications. Unigen's Valley benchmark might be old, but it's a good indicator of graphical performance compared to lighter games. Think Grand Theft Auto F1 2017. Our simulated PlayStation 5 score average frame rates of 113, 74, and 34 frames per second across the previously mentioned resolutions. The PlayStation 5's estimated performance, again factoring in that 10% flops per FPS improvement, comes in at 139, 96, and 45 frames per second. Those 4K numbers are getting better, but what about testing a real game? Shadow of the Tomb Raider has hammered this GPU in the past, and now it's time to put it to the test again. Running through the entire exercise again shows surprising results. With the GPU being the limiting factor, we see our simulated PlayStation 5 showing 93, 73, and 42 frames per second at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. If we keep that 10% RDNA 2 improvement in flops per second per frame rate, Laura Croft comes in at an average 59 frames per second at 4K. Huzzah! Even if we only account for the performance per watt improvement, she only needs to gain, on average, 7 frames per second to meet that target. And this is at the medium detail settings. So AMD, I have some questions about this metric. Is this claim only for your top-end GPU, or are you saying that all RDNA 2 SKUs will see this improvement? Does this metric include your hardware accelerated ray tracing that you mentioned? And more importantly, will I have to lie to my wife that the PlayStation 5 will be worth the money, or do I need to go and yell at Sony asking for answers? Unfortunately, performance per watt doesn't tell the full story when it comes to hardware reveals, but it does release just enough to whet our appetite while we wait for more announcements. The Unreal 5 engine release makes me think all of these numbers are possible. I'm still waiting to hear more about the storage improvements mean for gameplay performance, and I hope to hear answers from this soon, because I'm going to have to do a lot more chores before holiday 2020 comes around. Sincerely, Turk. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the format. You know, I'm trying some new things out with the channel, so let me know down in the comments what you thought about it. If you guys are looking for a community to talk about computer stuff, hardware, tech, any of that kind of nerdy stuff, go and check out my Discord. I got the link down in the description. We'd love to talk with you guys. And of course, make sure you guys follow me on Twitch. I did all of this PlayStation 5 stuff a couple weeks ago, and I'm just now getting it to YouTube. So if you want to see me play the PlayStation 5 in different games, you can tell me what you want to see. Let me know, and I will definitely hop on it. But again, guys, thank you for coming by. I hope you all have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one.